Okay, with me is Michael Martinez, the Honduran warrior. Uh, thanks. What's thanks up, for, man? Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. You know, it's my first time being on a podcast, you know, or something that someone wants to know about me or you know, what wants to know what's going on with me, you know? Absolutely. Right. And, and you better get used to it because yeah. if you're going to be the first Honduran champion, you're going to be on the camera a lot. I know. So that's... <laughs> That's something I'm trying to get used to, you know. There's a, been a lot of people when I'm going out to the gym or, like, you know, to, like, a random gym or just training. You're like, yo, what's up, man? I'm like, hey, I don't know you, but <laughs> yeah. what's up, you know? Oh, that's the worst. That's pretty cool. Speaking of not knowing people, uh, you brought with you today your girlfriend. You yeah. want to go ahead and introduce her for us? Yeah, so this is my girlfriend, um, Diana. Uh, she's my <laughs> high school sweetheart. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've been with her about... Seven to eight years already since I was a sophomore in high school. Oh, so, so. she's she's the one who's been with you through yeah. it all. Yeah, she's been there all my jiu-jitsu tournament, my wins and losses. And so, yeah, she's just been there, you know, my ups and downs in life. So Your yes. ride or die. <laughs> yeah, my ride, ride or die. die. That, that's a fantastic. And thank you both for being here. So I appreciate that. So yeah. I uh, was interested in talking with you because sure. I, was, I was going through your profile and I saw that you have a lot of, uh, you have it set in your mind yeah. that you're going to be a champion. Yeah. The first Honduran champion. Yeah. Uh, so, tell us what's going on. Where, where, where do you get your drive from? What's pushing you on this? So there's a lot of things pushing me, you know. There's um, me representing my, my home country. So I was born in Honduras. That's where I, where I was born. We moved. When I was, you know, mom flee the country when I was like three years old, came over here, got raised in the United States. But as I was growing up, my mom kept on telling me everything that was good about Honduras, you know, all the culture, all the food we ate, everything, you know, that went on in Honduras. That's what I, that's what she taught me. And then, you know, as I started getting older, you know, things happened and I just started falling in love with the sport, you know, mixed martial arts. I started watching UFC, boxing. I was the type of kid that was, you know, talked a lot of shit, but was scared when the confrontation happened, you know? So at a certain point, you know, I was like, fuck it, you know, I'm going to do, I wanted to do boxing first, but I started with jujitsu. I started doing jujitsu with my coach, um, Anthony Aguilera. You probably, have, you probably heard of him before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, started, he was on the show. Yeah. I started with him because he was at the UFC gym in La Mirada. I started with him. And then, you know, after two, three years, we moved back. To, oh, we moved to Tillis, the old Tillis over there. And then, you know, started training. And then two years after that, we just um, kept, we just kept. You know, kept training, kept doing our thing, and then just, then we transitioned to, you know, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and then... Well, before before we get into your training, yeah, because I am interested in that, first help me understand, uh, you said you came over from Honduras with your mom when you were three? Yeah, when I was three years old. Do you old. remember coming over with your mom? No, I don't remember anything at all, you know, I just, I was very, very small, so I couldn't really, I, I, to be honest, I don't know anything at all. She, yeah. Did she tell you why... Uh, why she? You said she fleed Honduras. Yeah, yeah. She she just fleed just because she wanted a better life for us. Mm. She we were like uh, she was a family of four kids. Family of four. It was my dad, my mom, and my brother, my two brothers, and my sister, including me as four. And then she just wanted a better life for us, and then she moved over here, you know, in the United States. And then you know she just kept on pushing forward, and then as we got older. You know, we just all did our own thing, you know. Yeah, pretty much like that. Okay. And so so your mom, did did you come over with your dad as well? Or? Yeah, with my dad as oh, well, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And so your mom raised you in what city? So we kind of like, we so we were, our financial situation was not great at all. So we would like go places to places, you know, we would stay at one spot for maybe a couple months, you know, we didn't have money, so we had to move to a different spot. But uh, as I was growing up, um, I would say I would just stay just in Orange County, I would say. Orange County my whole life, I, would, I lived in like Westminster, you know, for a good part, I was living in Buena Park, Anaheim, and that's just pretty much those areas right there, yeah. Uh, as you were growing up, 
uh, were the kids nice to you when you were going to school? Um, I would. There's a lot of people you know that say that they get bullied. No, I wasn't that type. I didn't. I didn't get bullied. I just. I would say the kids around me, they were just, you know, pretty cool. You know, yeah. Hispanic kids, Latino kids, you know. We're all pretty much the same, you know. I was I was chunky back then, you know. <laughs> I was everyone I think everyone has the exact same story the same story. It's like, oh, I was fat before and now yeah. I got into I got into martial arts, now I'm skinny. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much it, you know. I was fat kid. Hung out with my best friends, you know. I'm still friends with those my best friends that I was with. Since high school. Yeah, I saw some pictures. Yeah. You yeah. guys look like a tight group of guys. Yeah, we've been um, friends since before even my girlfriend, you know? Mm. So we've been, we've been, those are my ride or dies as well, you know? <laughs> yeah. We've been friends since a long ass time ago. Do any of them also fight? Yeah, one of my, my best friend, his name is Jimmy, Jimmy Leon. He, he has so much potential. It's just that he, his life gets in the way, you know? He does mm. construction. So you have to literally, there's over, he has to do a lot of overtime, you know, and then like literally like 16, 20 hours, you know, yeah. sometimes a lot of shifts. So he doesn't have time to train. But every time I go to a martial arts gym or anything, I always hype him up like, yo, he's legit. You know, he started boxing when he was like five years old. He's really good. Only thing is he doesn't have the time to train. But once he does get training, you know, he's Next level. But. Yeah, that's a common problem that a lot of fighters, yeah. a lot of men who have potential, but at the end of the day, it's whether or not you can discipline yourself yeah. and get yourself in the gym and, you know, have, a lot of people have the potential. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I So you. what is it about, about you that you're able to keep it, keep yourself on the grind and keep disciplined? How do you do that? So what I do is, so I, I put in my mind that it's, so if I want to be a champion, this is what needs to be done. So me and my coach, me and my coach, um, Thomas Landero, we both have this mindset, like, if you want to become world champion, we have to do what needs to be done. So if I have to run 20 miles a day to be world champion, I'm going to do that. No, there's no excuse. There's no, oh, like, oh, fuck, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to do it. That's what it takes to be a champion. So if I need to do, say, if I need to be disciplined, that's what I'm going to do if I need to, like, you know, cut these people out of my life. That's what I'm going to do. Mm. If I need to literally work eight-hour shifts uh, from work, you know, my personal my personal job, then go training, that's what I'm going to what's That's what I'm gonna do to achieve my dreams. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm like, say, I'm going to work eight hours, and then I'm only going to train 30 minutes, you know. I need to get the most out of my training because that's how I'm going to achieve my dreams, you know. Um, if I can do extra work, you know, that extra, say, 30 minutes of just, like, you know, doing, like, watching fighting videos or something like that, oh, that's what I'm going to do. But what I try to pr prioritize is training, work, sleep, repeat. Training, work, sleep, repeat. That's what, that's what I try to do. And then... And, and where do you fall in on that? <laughs> <laughs> um... Honestly, I think that he tries to make time for everything. Mm. He tries his best. Um, he also tries his best to make time for me, even if it's like an hour or something, mm. which I think it's, it's good that he does that. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about you guys' story. Like, how did you guys meet in high school? So we met uh, with one of, my, one of my close friends as well. We were... So how it originally started was... So before I got into mixed martial arts, I was always watching soccer. I was always like a football player uh, fan. So did, did you think you were gonna play soccer? That's what I thought so too. <laughs> I honestly thought I was, you know, gonna, you know, be a soccer player. That's what my goals was before, but I never really got into that, you know. Yeah. But going back to the story, so how I originally met her was so I was. In the hallway, looking at my phone, watching a soccer game, and she came up to me, and I was like, "Um, who are you?" And <laughs> she was like, "Oh, I'm Diana," and I'm like, oh, "Okay, cool, I'm Michael." And then I just went back to my, you know, <laughs> watching my my soccer, and then um, that's that's how that's what it was the first day, you know. And I asked you, I was like, "What are you still doing here at school? It's already yeah. five p.m." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'm watching soccer. Yeah, I'm watching soccer, <laughs> and then um. That day passed, right? And then um, I was, um, as I was, like, all you know, I was, like, younger, I was, like, I wanted attention from people. So I would, like, be on Snapchat. 
And it's sometimes like if I knew that person or if I wanted like a follow or something, you know, I'll be like, oh, I'll follow this person, you know. So and here I, you are trying to connect, yeah, <laughs> in real life. <laughs> yeah. So I just I follow I'll, I'll follow around the people, you know, on Snapchat and all that stuff. So I'll follow around the people, and then uh, I pop up my phone on Snapchat, and I'm like, oh, look at this pretty girl, you know. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, I was following her because you know I was following around the people. Yeah, I was following her, and then my friend tells me like, hey, I know her. He's like, oh yeah, she's cute. And like I can help you, you know hook up with this girl and i was like oh okay cool and then like the following day he's like he's like hey um diana likes you and i was like who's diana the girl you were talking about and i was like oh cool and then pretty much you know one thing led to other we started talking um he basically what happened was like we literally talked for one day right one or two days and then um we just started dating right after it yeah. was like one of those long talks. Yeah, yeah. One of those I was like, long oh my talks. god, we talked forever. Yeah, so we literally like talked for one day. Then the next day, um, I asked her out. I was like, "Hey, you want to be my girlfriend?" She was like, "Yeah." You know? On date one. Yeah, on day one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah day one. It's because you know, like before, um, before I met her, there's always like uh, girls like I'll try to talk to, you, and then like literally a week later, they'll lose feelings. Mm. So I thought, you know, if I if I told her, you know, want to go out with me, like, right there and there, if she would say yes, then she would, you know, then like it's, me. It's she, gotta last yeah, it's gonna last more than a week. Gonna be, yeah, <laughs> it's going to last more than a week. But, yeah, luckily she said yeah. You know? <laughs> That's great. Uh, so, so is it safe to say it was love at uh, first sight, basically? Yeah, I would say I love at first sight. Or second sight. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever, but, yeah. That, that's fantastic. What, what high school were you guys going to? So, we went to... Um, a high school in Westminster? Yeah. Westminster High yeah. School. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's called mm-hmm. Westminster High School. It's the home of the Lions. That's mm-hmm. what they call it. The Lions. <laughs> yeah, the Lions, yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Now, were you already in the fighting? Were you already starting to train when you were in high school at some point? No. After no. you guys met? No. So, I started training, like, in... Right after COVID. Or, like, yeah, right after COVID. So, oh. like, 2020, 2021. Around How old there. are you right now? 22. Oh, okay. 22, yeah. Okay, so COVID... So in COVID, during COVID, you were twenty, maybe. Yeah, pretty much. About yeah. twenty. Yeah, about twenty. And then, what gym did you? What gym did you first pop into? So I first started at the UFC in La Mirada. That's uh, where I saw Coach Anthony Aguilera. Okay. I was like, bro, like for jujitsu. Yeah, for jujitsu. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted no to. Do, yet. Yeah, I wanted to do um, you know, boxing first, but the classes there was only like once so once a week, you know, and jujitsu was like pretty much I believe like every day. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, there's only so many days you can get knocked upside the yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, um, pretty pretty much just trained jujitsu for the whole I think like full year until we moved uh, until uh, Coach Anthony Aguilera went to um, Tillis. Then after that, uh, I had my first BJJ tournament. It went, and it went pretty good for my first one. Uh, I did, I forgot what, what weight class. I think it was like 153 it was, like 156 with the gi. Mm-hmm. Um, first, I had three matches that day. The first match, um, it was my first time ever competing in anything. Like Wait, Which uh, tournament was it? Do you remember? Uh, I think it's called the NABJJ. North America. Yeah, that one, okay. yeah. Got it. So I did that one. Um, so my first competition, well, I had like five matches. Or four matches, I believe. Yeah, four matches. Oof. Three gi and one no gi because I, I always like to do, like, um, no, gi and no gi. So I wanted to get a little feel of both. Mm-hmm. So for the first match, how that one went was literally uh, it, everything happened so quick, you know, all the adrenaline in and everything. Like, it was literally my first time feeling it. It was like, oh, shit, what, what the hell do I do? <laughs> so once the person just came at me, I was like, you know, everything went out the window. And then once that 30 seconds started, like, going... Uh, I think I submitted the guy in like two a minute and a half minute two minutes. I submitted him. What'd you get him with? Um, it was a bow and arrow choke. Well, it was a trying to do a bow and arrow choke. You know, my coach uh, was like pull pull, and I'm like I'm pulling. He's like put your <laughs> arm over it, and I was like trying to do it. Right. And um, and then the guy started tapping right, and since all my adrenaline and everything was in me, I literally did not know what was going on. So I just kept on pulling until the ref was like saying, "Stop, stop, stop!" And I was like, "Oh shoot, I'm sorry, bro." And like, yeah, 
That was your first match. Yeah, first match. And, and then, then you and then you had a second. Yeah, the second match. Uh, that one was like okay, you know, it's the adrenaline is gone. You know, now I just need to need to like keep it going. You know, so that one, um, the second match was going good. It lasted a little bit longer. Um, and that one, I did submit the person again. I that one, I got a. I believe it was a, either a guillotine or a anaconda. One of those. Got him one of those. He was, he was the, that guy was more of like, he was trying to, uh, it's hard to explain. He was more like trying to use, it's more of his strength, you know, he's trying to use his, his muscle to pull, pull through, like say like, most of my guard and everything. So he's trying to use his strength. Yeah. And then once, um once he's like, he exposed himself a bit, I got his neck and then I submitted him. And then my third match, I lost that one. Mm-hmm. I lost that one. I was, like, so drenched, you know. I was like, I can't do this again, you know. And I was going against this guy, and pretty much he wasn't really doing anything. He was just, like, laying on top of me the whole time. He's probably just as tired as yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> he was literally laying on top of me. I was trying to, you know, pass his guard, you know, take his bag, try to do everything I can. And then pretty much I just fell short by two points. And, and then after that, I got second place for my first tournament. And then I was like, then my coach was like, you know, you're up again, right? I was like, damn, man. For the for the open weight or the uh, no gi, no gi. Oh, I was man. like, damn. I was like, okay. So then I do the no gi. Uh, the first match, it was um, it was it's way different, you know. When you go from when you transition from gi to no gi, I was like, okay, I think gi is gonna be way easier, you know, than no gi. But once you start, like, trying to wrestle with people, it's just a whole different, like, a different level, you know? Like, saying when, like, when you do gi, you can grab on their gi, you know, pull them down. This, you can't grab on any shirt, you know? You literally have to grab on their skin, you yeah, know? Their, yeah, their, their the muscles. Arm. Yeah. You're hoping that they're chiseled because then yeah. they have something to get anchor off of. Yeah, but, like, literally it's hard, you know? And then pretty much I got submitted and I got submitted pretty much. And then it was a learning experience, you know? I, I'm not the type of guy that if I lose, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like, fuck this. You know, I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm. I just, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to train harder, come back better. And pretty much what I did. And then after that, um, I think maybe a couple months later, I did my other tournament. This one was um, a little bit more like a little rough just because my, I think this time my weight cut wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be as my first one. So what happened was like my weight cut, uh, I weighed in at I think same, you know, 153, 156 with the gi. Weighed in and then pretty much my body was like, bro, you need something in your system, you know? And then mostly those BJJ tournaments, what happens is that you weigh in and then 10 minutes later, you already competing, which, you know, when you do like fights and stuff like that, like actual like boxing matches, you weigh in, and then you at least have, like, seven hours to compete later on, you right, know? Right. The BJJ tournaments, you like, you weigh in, and then ten minutes later, you compete. You know, You're like, dead. bro. You don't I even get a chance to eat. Yeah, you don't even <laughs> have a chance to eat. So, I literally was fighting on an empty stomach pretty much, you know? Pretty much. And then the first round, like, the first match, I lost by, like, points, you know? Second match, I couldn't get. I lost by points again. And then the third match... Pretty much lost by points. I do, didn't. Do you still like doing uh, yeah, jiu-jitsu I like, tournaments? I like doing jiu-jitsu tournaments. I feel like those, I feel, those are, I feel like more, they take a toll on your body. You you literally have to use your, all your muscles, I feel like. And like, like when it comes to like boxing, it, you literally can say if you, if I, if I only want to punch, I can punch, you know? When I do kickboxing, I can just kick if I want to, you know? I can keep you at range, kick, kick, just kick you. And then for jiu-jitsu, you literally have to use everything. You have to use your arm, bicep, tricep, legs. You literally have to use everything. That's what I feel. If you really want to get, like, a, f- a feel for MMA, start with jiu-jitsu. Because jiu-jitsu, you're going to... You know, the, the, a fight starts standing. But once you go on the ground, it's way different, you know. Mm. So yeah. if you want to start with BJJ, you know, I recommend it. So let me ask you a question. So you start off by doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu and competing in tournaments. Yeah. But at that time, did you have it in your mind already that you were going to try MMA? Or, or if not, then what possessed you or what happened that you just started, you, you decided to get into this? So 
Well, well, first of all, did you do kickboxing first or did you go into MMA? So do, we're doing kickboxing right now, yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. So you're kickboxing. not doing you're not in it doing the MMA yet. No, no. Okay. So we're our that's our trajectory. You know, we want to go MMA. Maybe after after this fight in May, we want to go and do MMA fight. That's what we want to there. So that that fight in May is on the thirty first. Yes, thirty first. Do you already know who you're going to be fighting? So the ponies keep on switching. You know, we had a guy. Um, he fell out. He broke his foot. Um, then we had another guy. His name was Robert Ginter. He fell out too. He he pulled out. We don't know what reason. And then we got this other guy. Um, I think it's Armando Miguel Romero. And so for the most part, he seems like ready to go. He seems like we're that's the guy we're gonna fight. So hopefully that's the guy we fight. Have you already started looking into who he is and stuff? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, I'm I'm. I'm the type of guy, like, my coach always says is, like, he's, like, I'm going to find out the, the most information I can from my, my opponent, you know? By the end, by the, say, by the time the fight comes, we already know how you sleep, how you eat, what you <laughs> eat, where you take a shit, you know? We know everything about you, you know? Wow. We know your twitches and everything. That's the type of person I am, you know? I want to know, like, literally who I'm fighting, you know, like, what is it that you do, you know? Are you working harder than me, you know? Are you, what are you doing, you know? I want to know everything about you. So when the time comes, I know where you're, where you're weakest at, where you're strongest at, you know? I want to know how to beat you, you know? Because at the end of the day, um, we're both fighters and let the best man win, you know? Absolutely. Pretty much. Absolutely. So uh, this is going to be your second amateur fight? Yes, my second amateur fight, yeah. So what do you think you're going to take away from your first fight? Um, that you're going to have or that you've corrected going into your next fight? So what I like to do is um, I like to focus more like on my technique, right? My my first amateur fight, that one was more of like brawling. So Well, you won that, right? Yeah, I won and that a, one. Yeah. And the decision. Yeah, decision. And yeah. I saw some, glim- uh, some yeah. clips of that. Yeah. You look like you tagged them up pretty good yeah. quite a few times. Yeah, I like... Like, so how the fight started, right? So, so how the fight started was like I was gonna go in there, you know, use my head movement, use everything, you know, my technique, use everything. But once I felt his power, because it was my first time going up a weight, or it was, I they, they couldn't find me a fight, right, at my weight. So I told my coach like, "Fuck it, give me, give me whoever, you know, give me whoever they got." So they're like, "Yo, we got this one person at like one fifty five, you know, one sixty. I think it was one fifty six. It was." I was like, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll take him. So going into the fight, I knew that he was going to be heavy, you know, he was going to be heavy handed, you know, his punches were going to hit a little bit harder. So once I felt that first punch, I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not going to let this guy punk me. So I literally started like throwing one twos, you know, threes, kicks, a bunch of kicks. And then pretty much the guy didn't know what to do. But every time he threw a punch at me, I just felt like the power, you know, I just how to make sure, like, he respected me. So I literally hit him with the twos. And you can see on my Instagram, you know, all the times I punched him, his head kept on bopping oh, back yeah, and everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah you're, definitely, you're definitely connected yeah. right in the face. Yeah. And you had this other kick, too, uh, that you, like, a, it was a tight kick to the lower leg. Yeah. Where you almost got him off balance a yeah. few times. Yeah, those were nice. Yeah, I, I always kept on doing that. But only thing that sucks is that what I'm really working on this time is making sure I connect with the shin. Because mm. that fight, I connected more with my foot, which, like, after the fight, I felt it. Like, my whole foot was all sore and shit. I was like, <laughs> damn, man, I couldn't even walk. My foot swole, like, started, it was it got swollen like a balloon. I was like, oh, man. But, you know, after, you know, like, say, massages and everything, it went back to normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, um, this fight, um, I'm going to be more technical. I'm going to be using my head movement. I've been working a lot on my head movement. And we've been sparring a lot this this for this fight camp literally every week we've been sparring for the the last couple fights I haven't been sparring as much just because our uh because I, I move uh I went to I'm training with a different gym now um Tom with my coach Tom Lindero uh Lindero so there's literally only like a couple guys there so it's hard to get um training with different type of people you know how did you end up uh, moving over with Tom so well tell us you know um, they have an awesome Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, you know, Noah has his um, 
knows how to train, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners, you know, has an awesome, awesome staff there. But I just felt like with Tom, with Tom, my goal was to become, you know, MMA world champion. And I know he's, he's a pro. He has knockout power. He has all the techniques. He has wrestling. He has everything, you know, to make me become a world champion. And that's what, that's what I felt. And then when I saw him, like, training me, he was, like, always there, you know. He was, like, with me with my weight cuts. He was telling me, yo, bro, eat this, you know, do this. Literally was there, like, from the beginning to the end from my first fight to the, you know, to the literally from, like, when the training started to the, to the fight day. He was right there, you know, weight cutting, giving me tips to how to weight cut, you know. Yo, bro, drink water, you know. Drink. We're going to water load, you know, three days out, two days out, you know. What is that, water load? So it's when um, you start drinking water. So we drink um, distilled water right before you start doing the weight cut. So once the... Your body just starts flushing everything out, pretty much. All That's the water. With, uh, because of it, the water's distilled. Or? Yeah, the, just because the so uh, the water you say like the one with the nutrients and stuff. Once you boil it, it doesn't have any nutrients. So it's just basically there's no nutrients at all. It just goes in your in your mouth and comes out. Oh, interesting. Pretty much, yeah. So once you have a lot of it, your I guess your body gets confused or whatever it gets put into. It's something you know. So then once you start weight cutting, it just starts all coming out. Yeah, all your water plus the water that you're carrying. So it just starts um, all coming out of your body once you start sweating in the sauna, pretty much. Right. Yeah. So when how does it feel? Like, uh, I was watching a video of you. You had just won against your opponent, Jacob, I think his name was. Oh. Uh, for your first amateur fight. Uh, uh, yeah. The one, you won by, the one we were just talking about, you won by decision. Yeah. You were tagging him up. And then you get on the podium. And yeah. you're right there just with your trophy. How does that feel? It feels good, to be honest. Um, it's just crazy, like when you see fans or like people that you don't know support you. That's that just feels really awesome. Just because sometimes you know my personal, like say my mom and my dad, like you know my stepdad, all those people, you know, support me. They're always there. But other family members, you know, that I wish they were there, they're not there. So when other people that that don't know me, you know, like, hey, yeah, good job, man, good job, brother. And I'm like, that just gives me, like, so much more to fight for, you know, or just gives me, like, yeah, you know, I feel good. That's what, that's, that's what, it feels awesome when, you know, when you're just standing there and just, like, people are just shouting your name, like, just screaming, like, yeah, and they're all drunk and everything. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. You're having a fun time, you know? Yeah, come back. Yeah, Let's come back. Again. Yeah, because yeah, uh, one of the things I liked about you is uh, your, your, conviction that you yeah. have uh on your page you're like i'm gonna do this it's happening yeah you know there, there's basically your well i was talking about this with uh art gijon yesterday about manifesting your, yeah. your future do you take any do you do something to help you manifest do you like visualize or is there anything that you do that maybe other boxers or fighters don't do or or do you, do you have something like that so, um, I'm into I'm into Christ, right? I'm, Jesus, I'm into Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. I always tell my mom, like, um, I think God has a plan for me. You know, I know that I'm gonna be world champion. I can just see it. Like, I'm I'm not sure. You know, I'm in my dreams. I can see it. Like, I can literally see. I'm in the UFC holding, you know, a belt, or you know, just I'm, I'm in the octagon right there, and I can just see all the Honduran flags, like literally, like doesn't feel like a dream i just like i just tell my mom like, it's like it's hard to explain you know it if it looks like a dream but i feel like it's gonna happen if that makes sense yeah like i just know it's gonna happen like i i just can't explain it but eventually it will happen and like so i, I just like to tell people you know like bro i'll be the first to ever do it like just follow my journey you know if i don't like if i don't do it you know, it's good, you know, we'll, we'll see what God has in plan for me. But if not, I just want to be the baddest motherfucker out there, you know. I yeah. want to be known as he took any fight. He, he fought the best. He fought the best of the best. And he never, never backed down. That's what I want to represent, you know. But one thing for sure, I want to be champion for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your faith in Jesus. Uh, is that something that your mother instilled in you or your parents instilled in you when you were growing up? Or did you find Jesus later on in life? So pretty much my mom was the one who 
kept on, you know, kept on talking about God and as I was growing up. But I was not pretty, I wasn't much of a, of a believer until certain things started happening. And then as I got older, you know, life happens, you know, stuff started happening. And I'm like, oh, I start to see where Jesus Christ starts to come in, you know. As I was, uh, when I was like very, very young, we wouldn't have money, you know, for like rent and stuff, you know. And mom was would always tell me this story, you know, like say, oh, we didn't have money for rent. But all of a sudden, you know, we we came up with like $2,000 for rent. We don't know how we got it, but we got it. We're not saying, you know, it just came out of, it just went in our pocket, you know. We had like two grand, you know. They worked hard for it, you know. They'll be getting the same consistent paycheck, 500 But then all of a sudden, you know, they were checking. And you're like, oh, shoot, where does this money come from, you know. We're like, oh, you know. We were like, we were poor, really poor. We were live in a in a freaking trailer, you know. We were live in a trailer in the backyard of someone, you know. And God took us out of there. He took us out from that trailer, you know, it's broken down, literally. There's no EC, no heater. We would literally be, I would consider, I would consider myself poor, you know. People didn't know because, you know, we, we, weren't, we weren't that type of family that would, like, blur everything out. Like, hey, man, we're poor, you know, could you help us out? No, we would just stick in our own bubble, you know. We would find our way to move forward, you know. And God took us out of there, you know, blessed us with money, and then, we got an apartment, you know, that was our first, you know, like, oh, you know, God helped us do that, you know, because even when we got that apartment, my mom didn't have money to, you know, put the down payment because there she said she only had like 50 bucks, you know, 50 bucks just for the freaking, um, I think the lease form or whatever like that. Yeah, only 50 bucks for the form. And then she was like, bro, we don't got no money, you know. I spent my last 50 bucks for the form. Now I still got to spend more money for the food for my children. And she was like, oh, we just got to work, you know, work more, you know. And pretty much uh, she t- tells me the same thing, you know. I don't know how we got the money, but we got it. And only thing I think is Jesus Christ. You know, and, I, and as I was growing up, you know, I, I, since I'm not from, I'm not born here, you know, so I'm considered undocumented person, undocumented person, right? So I was growing up, I started realizing that you need you need papers, you need some cer- certain documents for work. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't get, you know, as you're growing up, you want to get, say, be a firefighter, be a police officer. And then as you grow up, you're like, oh, shoot, I need certain, certain papers, you know, certain documents to get the job I want. And, you know, my mom will always be praying, praying for me, you know, because there's, we, I needed um, to work, you know, somehow to provide for the family. And good thing is that uh, there were people out there that would um, pay me cash for work. So that was another blessing that God gave me, you know, help, helping me find these people that would pay me cash. Because there's not a lot of people that will do that, you know. There, there's, a, there's a bunch of people that would be like, hey, bro, you can't work here, you know. I can't pay you cash. Even though they could, you know. They also be like, no, can't pay you cash, you know. What kind of jobs were you picking up for so, cash? So literally, like, I started working. I was like 14 years old. So how I started my first job was at the Swami. Well, I started at the Swami. Some girl would pay me like 50 bucks the whole day. It was just like at the Swami, you know, just bringing back to the customers here and there. And then after that, I was working. Did, at, did you feel like that was a lot of money, or you kind of? Yeah, made, I felt like a lot of money, you know. And I was 14 years old, you know, I felt like 50 bucks was a lot. But my mom would be pissed at me because I would get those 50 bucks. And I was the type of kid that if you had an Adidas shirt, you know, I'll go (laughs) buy one. So the lady would give me 50 bucks, right? And then I saw she had an Adidas jacket right there. I got my paycheck and spent like 40 bucks on the Adidas jacket. And then when when my mom picked me up, I was like, so where's your money? And she's like, right here. He's like. Why well, you only have 10 bucks? And I was like, I spent it on that. She was like, oh, why did you do that? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I was like, because I wanted the jacket. But, yeah. Do you, do, just... you, do you still do that? or? No, 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 no. I don't do that anymore. Now I don't care about, like, anyone's, um, you know, like, I do care about, like, certain brands, you know, like, do like to wear that stuff. But I won't spend my paycheck, say, on, on unnecessary things, you know. Now I'm more, like, a uh, little more conserv- conservative, you know. I like to, I like to waste my money on certain on on my say needs, you know, not wants now. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Are you still uh, helping with the family? Is that yeah, something? pretty much. Still- I try my best, you know, try my best to, you know, support my mom because I got my own life too, you know? Yeah. I got absolutely. my, I got mine. I got my girlfriends, you know, I try my best to do, to support everyone, you know? Sure. Pretty much. Is the undocumented thing going to be a problem when you turn pro? No, no. So, so right now we're in the process of getting, you know, the green card and everything. Okay. So that's another good thing that God has done, you know? There's um, some something happening in our life that can't talk about it, but sure. what that what that certain situation happened um, got us a case so we can file for a green card. Mm. So those certain um, circumstances, you know, that God put in our life, you know, benefited us in a certain way. So so eventually, once I do become, um, you know, pro UFC. I'll, I'll you'll be, yeah, you'll be I'll be good. To go. um, I'll be ready get to get your checks. Yeah, get your checks, yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do with that money when you when you're a champion? And you're making some big money. So to be honest, well, like I told my mom, like whoever is uh, supporting me, whoever it is, say like if you're just like the random Joe, and I do happen to remember you once I do become pro. Trust me, I'm a, I'm gonna give you something, you know, because a lot of people aren't gonna support you, you know, not not everyone's gonna support you. I tell people, whoever, if you support me, I'm going to support you, like, now and then later on as well. I told my girl, like, yo, you're supporting me now. Once I become pro and start making all this money, don't you won't have to worry about anything after that, you know? Mm-hmm. Same thing with my coach. I always tell my coach, like, yo, coach, like, like, um, I'm going to, like, because I always want to make get a gym for him, you know? I was like, We're yo. get you some better yeah, punching bags yeah. around your coach. Yeah, I was like, bro. <laughs> I'm going to take care of everyone, you know? That's, what, that's pretty much the whole goal. And then pretty much what I told my mom was, like, I'm going to get you a credit card. I'm just going to be like, here you go. And then, like, just <laughs> don't worry about anything, you know? Just swipe, 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 swipe. Right. If, if, you, if you had, if you could have, the, when you get your championship belt, when you're a champion, if you could have it be anywhere against anyone, where would you fight that fight and who would you fight it against? Oh, I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like if I would have to be, if it was supposed to be a championship fight, I will fight it anywhere, you know, just, just as long as it's not in the United States. It would be a pretty awesome to go, you know, travel across the country, you know, and fight for a championship belt. And if it was someone else, I mean, I'll just be the baddest dude, you know. I want to fight the baddest <laughs> dude. If that's, like, say, if that's, like, say, Max Holloway, if that's the baddest dude out there, I'll fight Max Holloway because... A lot of people are like, don't get me wrong, uh, Max is the BMF, you know? Yeah. But if he tells me, like, you want to stay and bang right here, even if I'm losing, just like Justin Gaethje, I'm staying and banging. I'm not going to be yeah. like a little like a little bitch, you know, and run away. Hell no, I'm going to stand my ground, you know? I feel like that's the whole point of the BMF, you know? Right. Stand your ground and whoever wins, you know? So when you say you're going to be the first Honduran champion, are you talking about MMA or kickboxing? or? So I... have I've done my research, you know, I want to make sure my, like, I'm valid, you know, I want to make sure I want to, I'm going to become the first Honduran champion, just in anything, you know, it could, it could be boxing, whatever, but I want to be the first champion ever. I've done my research, I've gone through the internet, you know, I've gone through, say, promotion in Honduras, you know, I've gone through literally, I mean, there's, in Honduras, you know, they have like little MMA promotions, but you know, but they're not the best of the best. When you come to the UFC, that's when you become the best of the best, you know? Literally everyone from around the world. Gone through the internet, and I've seen there's n- there's no, like, champions from Honduras, you know? There's some people that have pretty good records, but no champions. I've seen um, Teofimo Lopez. He's a, he's a champion, but he represents Honduras, but his parents are from Honduras, you know? But he's born in the United States. Me, I will be, like, the first... Honduran born MMA world champion. He's boxing. I'll be, you know, MMA world champion. If I could become kickboxing, even better, you know, be the first to ever do it on both. But yeah, pretty much. Have you been uh, back to Honduras since you came no. over when you were a kid? No. Do you, do you feel like you long to go there and, and see Honduras? Yeah. So we've been, you know, we talk about once we get our green card, we want to go over there. Like literally once we, do, once we first get it, want to take our first trip over there that's because you know that's where we're that's where i was born that's where we're from we want to 
I want to know more about my culture, you know. Do you still have family over there? Yeah, well, we have my grandpa. And then, you know, other family members that I don't know of that they know me. Mm. But, yeah, I want to get to know all those people, too. That's great. So you're, gonna, you're on the road. You got this fight coming up. What, what do you think are the challenges that you face going into this next fight? What do you expect to see when you go in there? So um, it's not more of a challenge. It's, I just want to make sure, like, I, go, I put a good performance, you know? I want to make sure, like, everyone sees me, like, damn, his boxing got better, you know? He, he, his kicks got better. His technique got better. It's all about, I feel like, my mentality, how it goes in it. So I don't want to feel like I'm say nervous or scared i want to feel calm because that's how i felt on my previous one my previous one i did the triple threat in the ifs yeah i felt calm i felt ready I, I felt ready to go same thing for my for the one that's coming up i want to feel ready to go i want to make sure that all the training that i put in it was you know worth it you know i don't want to make sure any days you know that passed these days that's passed i don't want to be like damn i, I could have done more you know I want to make sure when I get to the fight, like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to kick this kid's ass. So what do you guys, what do, you guys do for fun? When it's not kickboxing or training, what are you guys doing to, like, hang out? What do you, like, what do you guys like to do? Um, to be honest, like, since, you know, I was, like, a little chubby back then, food, Ah, <laughs> food is so good. Like, we always like to go out to eat on, like, you know, on the weekends, you know. We always like to go out on you know, weekends. We don't like to go eat, like, Mexican food. Um, she loves Italian food, so she loves uh, her pasta. Love Italian, too. <laughs> yeah, so we always try to, like, try to incorporate, you know, try to try to new places. But pretty much, like, right now, uh, for the last, like, a year, my mentality has just been, like, work, 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 work. So literally haven't had like say fun, I would say. Just like literally only fun I have with her is like going out to eat or hanging out with my friends once in a while. But mm -hmm. just pretty much it's always been like for the last past year was just like work, train, get the next fight, you know, after this one, next fight, next fight, next fight. But you know, once I'm able to like fight full time. I can probably have a little bit extra, say, uh, time to, you know, do fun things, you know, because once you got, if you want, like, once you have, like, work, you know, then train, and then you got to spend time with the girl and everything, there's really not enough hours in the day to get everything done. Mm -hmm. Once you train, you know, once I'm able to live off of fighting pro, or, you know, or just live off of fighting, I can stop working my nine to five, you know, then I'll have more time to do fun things, you know, like hike or do some other stuff. So you're working a full-time job as you're yeah. training. What kind of work are you doing or what do you so do? So I'm a manager at Healthy Meals Kitchen. So what that is, it's a meal prep store. What we do is pretty much pre, pre-made all the meals for like, say, if you're trying to lose weight or not even trying to lose weight, you know, it's all about just trying to eat healthy in general. So if you're trying to eat healthy in general, uh, Pretty much you just order ahead of time, say like 10, 15 meals or how many meals you want to eat for like your family. You pre-order ahead of time. And then on certain days, say our staff, like 10, 15 people come into the store, in the store and we start start making the meals. Start making the meals takes us about two, three days. And then the next, say the following day, we make everything and we ship them out. And then pretty much whoever wants to pick it up, you know, you can pick them up. Now, these are one of your sponsors, right? Yes, yeah, one of my sponsors. Yeah. So tell me, you have a few, a couple of sponsors, yeah. like two or three sponsors. Tell me about your sponsors. Let's uh, give them a little shout out. Yeah, so shout out to Healthy Meals Kitchen, Juice Flow, and then we got Fight Cola Apparel. What's so, that? What's that one? So Fight Cola Apparel, it's uh, just a fight brand that mm. just um, literally they made, um, they made, if you follow my Instagram, they made this fight shirt for me. It's called the Honduran Warrior, one and only. It's pretty dope as shirt. Uh, just hit me up on my Instagram, you know. I'll hook you guys up with the shirt or something. We'll see. Where do but they find you on Instagram? The, uh, my so my my Instagram is unique, you know. So it's the Honduran Warrior. Literally, yeah, it's very easy to yeah, find. Yeah, easy, very easy <laughs> to find. You guys will find it. But yeah. So they got the apparel. You yeah. got The meal prep, and then I think there's one more. Yeah, the juice flow. So that's um pretty much cold pressed juices. If you want, literally a juice with all your fruits and vegetables in a bottle. That's where you'll get it. Uh, juice flow. Pretty much, 
pretty easy to find as well. Juice flow, and then healthy meals kitchen meal prep. And yeah. Then. And what's your favorite juice drink? For the favorite juice drink there, I like the Volt. That one's so good. The Volt. Yeah. The what's Volt. it made of? So I don't. That one has. A, I forgot what it what it has, but I know it has. Um, I think it has pineapple, uh, chia seeds. I think probably have mango. I'm not too sure, but it has some other fruits and fruits and vegetable you can't even taste. But it tastes. Tastes awesome. Yeah, it tastes good. I'm curious to know how you know for for other amateur boxers out there because you're 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 getting to a point where you're you're blazing it. You're you're, yeah. you're becoming sooner or later you're gonna be a trailblazer. You're, yeah. you're the one who's yeah. done it. Whether it's someone else who's coming up behind you who hasn't. How did you how did you get um, sponsors? Like, did you go out there and look for them? Did they look for you? What did you do? So I try. I basically look for them, but some people, what they do is um, they always ask for money in return. You know, I I personally don't ask for anything in return. You know, I always just ask like, yo, you just give me some products, I'll promote you. Pretty much that's how it works. If you wanna say, if you wanna pay me, that's awesome. You know, if you wanna pay me, you know, that's awesome. But you know. I'll do it for free. Once I become pro, yeah, I'll charge you. But right now, you know, enjoy, enjoy the ride while it's free, you know. Like, I'll, I, don't, I don't like to say I'd rather pay for my own stuff, you know. Say I'd rather pay for my, say, my gear and everything. If you guys want to help me out, that's awesome. Like, the sponsor from Healthy Meals Kitchen, like, the boss, my boss, awesome dude. He always, he always like, was, he always says, hey, bro, any, any food you want, just grab anything, you know. I'll hook you up. Anything, any fees you want to have to pay for your fights, just let me know. I'll pay for them, you know. He's, he's the actual definition you know, of a true sponsorship because he always hooks me up with anything. Uh, anything like even family problems, you know, life problems. He wants to help me out. Awesome guy. So he believes in you. Yeah, he, he believes in me. Yeah, I believe in him, you know. Always take care of the business, his business, you know. You know? You always have each other's back, pretty much. And, and his and what's his name again? Adam Koji with the um, Healthy Meals, Healthy Meals Kitchen. Healthy Meals Kitchen. All right, that's great. Yeah. Um, I got one more question for you. Um, when you're walking around as the champ, and some little kid comes up to you and he's like, "Can I have your autograph?" <laughs> what do you want him to call you? Do you want him to call you, "Hey Warrior"? Can I get? Or do you want, "Hey Hundred Warrior"? What, what do you, how do you want them to call you? I want. I want. The, I want. People to call me the Honduran warrior. I just feel like, I don't know, I'm representing my country. I'm bringing everyone, you know, from Honduras with me when I go into in, in the ring. So just call me by my full, my, my full fighter name, you know, Honduran warrior. Honduras. I yeah. love it. I love it. And where are people going to be able to see your fight on May 31st? Uh, where is it going to be? What time is it at? Where can they get tickets? So if you guys want to get tickets, uh, just hit me up on my Instagram at the Honduran Warrior. It's going to be in Anaheim, the Grand Theater in Anaheim. Uh, it's literally right in front of um, Buca di Beppo uh, on a Harbor Boulevard right there. And then pretty much if you guys can't make it to the fight, you know, just follow my Instagram. I'll put the highlights, win or lose, you know. There's no, I could care if I win or lose, but, you know, yeah. You know, Mike, uh, Honduran Warrior. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh having this podcast with you sure i believe 100 percent you're going to be the first honduran war uh honduran champion for sure yeah. because you believe it yeah and so therefore it's only natural that i believe it so the best of luck to you thank you sure. so much to both of you guys for coming on and everyone can get tickets by hitting you up to your next yeah. fight on may 31st uh where you'll be having your second amateur fight and sure. the best of luck to you thank you sir absolutely thank you